Hello guys and gals, Lloyd Dobson here from Treasure Island, Florida. If you're looking at the screen, it says success and goal setting. Success is both a journey and a destination. It is both a study measured process toward a goal and the achievement of that goal. Success, an accomplishment great or small, and it is an understanding of the potential and power of an entire human life. Success is an awareness of value and its cultivation of value through discipline. It can be tangible or intangible. Success is a process of turning away from something in order to turn towards something else. From no exercise to exercise, from candy to fruit, from not investing to investing, from being poor to being rich. Success is responding to an invitation, an invitation to change, to grow, to develop, to become, to move up to a better place, a better vantage point. But most of all, success is making your life what you want it to be, considering all the possibilities Considering all the examples, what do you want for your life? That is the big question. Remember, success is not a set of standards from our culture, but rather a collection of personal values clearly defined and ultimately achieved. Success is your better life for you, the design you give it, the dreams you have, Making your life what you want it to be for you. That is success. Okay, with that overview, let's begin the further process of your success by looking at the art of property, properly looking at and setting goals. I think you'll hear a couple of thoughts you've never heard before. Okay, of all the things that have changed my life for the better, it was learning how to set goals. One morning after breakfast, shortly after I met Mr. Eigenbroke, the man who hired me in my early years, he asked me if he could see my current list of goals. He said, Lloyd, let me see your list of goals and let's go over them and talk about them. Maybe that's how I can help you right away. And I said, I don't have a list of goals, Mr. Eigenbroke. And he said, well, is it out in the car or at home someplace? I said, Mr. Eigenbrot, uh, I don't have a list anywhere. He said, well, young man, then that is where we better start. And he added, if you don't have a list of goals, I can guess your bank account within a few hundred dollars, which he did. And that got my attention. I said, you mean... If I had a list of goals, that would change my bank balance? He said drastically. And that day, I began a student of how to set goals. When I learned how, my whole life changed. My income, my bank account, my personality, my lifestyle, and my accomplishments. So I'd like to share with you the best I have learned on goal setting. First of all, I would like to say that we are affected by five factors. The first is environment. The second is events. The third is knowledge. The fourth is results. And the fifth and often overlooked and affects our lives is our view of the future, our dreams. I won't get into all those influences here, but let me concentrate on the fifth one, dreams. Of all these five influences, make sure your dreams are the greatest influence on your daily decisions and activities. To put it another way, make sure that the greatest pull on you is the pull of the future. For your dreams to greatly influence you, for the future to pull you, your future must be well planned. There are two ways to look at the future. One is apprehension. And the second is with anticipation. 
Guess how many people look at the future with apprehension? Why? They don't have it well designed. And without really thinking about it, they probably have bought someone else's view of how to live. You will face the future with anticipation when you have it planned. And this allows you to get excited about it. When you have designed your future results in advance, this is when your future will capture your imagination. It will exert an enormous influence on you. And to design your future, you must have goals. Well-defined goals are like a magnet. They pull you in their direction. And the better you have them defined, the better you have described them, the harder you work on them, the stronger they pull. And they pull you through all kinds of difficulties. Without goals, it's easy to let life deteriorate to a point where you're just making a living. It is not difficult to get trapped by economic necessity and settle for existence rather than substance. We all have a choice. We can either make a living or design a life. Mr. Eigenbroke said to me, I don't think your current bank balance is a true level of your intelligence, Lloyd. Well, I was happy to hear that. He said, I think you have plenty of talent and you're much smarter than the bank balance indicates. And that turned out to be true. I was much smarter. My question to him was, why isn't my bank balance bigger? And he said, you don't have enough reasons for accomplishing great things. If you had enough reasons, Lloyd, you could do incredible things. You have enough intelligence, but not enough reasons. That's the key. If you had enough reasons... In my years of study, I have discovered this. Reasons come first and answers come second. Life has a strange way of hiding all the answers and disclosing them only to people who have been inspired to look for them, who have reasons to look for them. To put it another way, when you know what you want and you want it bad enough, you're going to find ways to get it. The answers, the methods, the solutions will become evident to you. Hey, what if you had to be rich? Are there any books or CDs on the subject? The answer is yes. There are plenty of good ones. But if you don't have to be rich, you probably won't read the books or listen to the CDs. What drives us to find the answers is necessity. So work on your reasons first and answers second. Now, what are some of the reasons for doing well? Well, it varies from person to person. I'm sure if you did a little soul searching, you could come up with a fairly long list of reasons to accomplish great things. There are personal reasons, sometimes uniquely personal reasons. Some people do well for the recognition. Some do well because of the way it makes them feel. They love the feeling of being a winner. And that is one of the best reasons. I have a friend, Ed Penninger, who works 10 to 12 hours a day making more millions. He owns four car dealerships, a marina, hundreds of rental properties, some resort property, and it's not because he needs more millions. It is because of the joy and the satisfaction that comes with the feeling of being a constant winner. To him, money is not his main drive. It's not the money, it's the journey. Once in a while, someone says to me, Lloyd, if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't work another day in my life. Hey, that's probably why the good Lord sees to it that he doesn't get his million, because he would just quit. Family is another reason or motivator for doing well. Some people do extremely well because of other people, and that's powerful. Sometimes we'll do things for someone else that we wouldn't do for ourselves. We're made that way. I can remember before my wife died, I felt as if I needed at least a quarter of a million dollars just to have the ability to show her all the beautiful places in this beautiful world. How fortunate we are when we're affected that much by someone else. Family is a strong motivator and it's powerful. Benevolence, the desire to share, this is a powerful reason. 
to achieve. Some people do extremely well obtaining resources so they can be benefactors. When Andrew Carnegie, the steel magnate, died, his desk was open, and in one of the desk drawers was found a slip of paper. And on that slip of paper, Mr. Carnegie had written his goal for his life, and he wrote it when he was in his 20s. On that slip of paper, he had written, I'm going to spend the first half of my life accumulating money, and I'm going to spend the last half of my life giving it all away. He was so inspired by that goal that the first half of his life he accumulated $250 million. And during the last half of his life, he gave it all away. How powerful. What has you turned on? What has you getting up early, hitting it hard all day and staying up late? What has you inspired? Next question, what has you turned off? When I found the answers to those questions, my life exploded into change. I finally figured out what negative philosophy I allowed to limit me and had me turned off, and I got that cured. Then I found a long enough list of reasons to turn me on. And once the lights went on for me at age 25, they've never gone out. I've fallen out of the sky a few times, but I've never lost that drive to do something unique with my life. Now, there's another list of reasons for doing well. I call them nitty-gritty reasons. Those are hard little reasons that can really affect your life. Sometimes it doesn't take much of a goal to take you in a brand new life direction. A friend of mine has four money clips, each with ten $100 bills. He carries one on him at all times, and the other four are in his top drawer of his desk. He shared with me that it just made him feel better than having it in the bank. He said, that gives him a special feeling. It just feels better in his pocket. So, the obtainment of wealth is not a matter of intelligence. It's a matter of inspiration. So, if you have a strong enough inspiration, large or small, it can have an incredible influence on the direction of your life. Okay, guys and gals. Now I'm going to conclude this video, this overview of success and the reasons for setting goals. I'll be coming out soon with an additional video and we're going to design the next 10 years of your life. This is Lloyd Dobson coming to you from my branch office here in Treasure Island and I wish you all the success in the world.